Until the, if the Christian church does not start to teach against breaking the laws of God, the sore judgment will come upon you all and upon those in your congregation. What most people don't know about this church, mm -hmm. 70 to 80 percent of the church cares. 70 to 80 percent of the church cares. We understand y'all caring, but understand this, we're willing to die for what we believe in. Right? Christ. And but for you to say that Christ only came back for the 12 tribes is absolutely ridiculous. You are liars. Bitch, I'm talking about you. Yeah. You and you. As the leaders of the congregation, you have a very important responsibility to teach the people inside the laws of God so that God will not destroy them when he comes back with his angels. Death for homosexuality, death for being effeminate, death for breaking the Sabbath day, death for celebrating birthdays, death for all the things I've seen here in this church today. Christmas. Christ has came so you don't have to be instantly put to death. The one in verse 18. Come on. Come now. Let us reason to get to our purpose and come and sit down with you, brothers. Uh, our hey, beloved brothers. Is to reason together. Right? I like what you said even before we got in here. We just want to discuss and see your side, what you think about what we're discussing, and uh, reason together through the scriptures uh, and through what the Lord is trying to show us. All right? Read again. I said one in verse 18. Mm -hmm. Come now, let us reason together. The reason why we do this is because we apply what we see our elders in the scriptures have done. Go to Acts 17 and 2. Paul was fighting for the Lord when he was in the, in the spirit. He would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was reasoning with the brothers. Like the same same time in the synagogue. It's the same, it's the same yeah. thing. Go ahead. Yeah. And Paul, as his man was, went unto them. In three Sabbath days, reason with them out of the scriptures. You see, you did what? Reason with them out of the scriptures. That's our plan. We want to reason yeah. out of the scriptures. Gotcha. So I said we're the Israelites, right? Now, where did we get that from? Go to Deuteronomy 20. Let's go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So Moses delivered the word unto the Israelites. The whole book of Deuteronomy is written to the Israelites. Deuteronomy 28. And let's go to verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Come on. But it shall come to pass, thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, as I said, Moses delivered the word to the Israelites. He said, if you will not hearken unto the voice of unto the word of God, unto the things that I have commanded you to do. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments mm -hmm. and his statutes which I command thee this day. Read. That all these curses, what? All these curses come on. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Lord said all these punishments will come upon, curses of punishment. The punishments will come upon you and overtake you. Let's read about what these punishments are. Come on. Verse 16. Yeah. Curse shalt thou be in the city. So, in all of the cities, and this is not just in this time, because the curses have been on us since they've been put on us. It's like the Lord says, the, all my judgments are like a ring. So it keeps happening. It happened in the time of Greece. It happened in the time of Rome. Now it's happening in America. He said, curse will you be in the city. In every major city that you go to in America, Houston, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, Detroit, the ones you see in poverty, in the bottom of, uh, bottom of society are us. They look like us. They talk like us. They are us. Read. Curse shall thou be in the city, mm -hmm. and curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall you be in the field. In the fields, what do we have to pick? Cotton, tobacco, sugar. This is what God is saying happened to the Israelites. I've never seen uh, a man with a little yarmulke on his head pick tobacco or pick cotton. Curse shall you be in the field. Jump to verse uh, 37. Verse 37. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt become an astonishment, Read. a proverb, and a byword. So a proverb is a wise saying. It's a stereotype. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, what stereotypes do we have? Black people, our favorite food is what? Chicken and watermelon. That's a stereotype. Or if you want to hide something from a black man, where you put it? In the book. In the book, you see, you, you already knew that. 
that's another stereotype. That God said you will become a proverb and a byword. A byword is outside of your God-given name. A, a title or an identity or a moniker outside of your God-given name. Our God-given name is Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Naphtali, Issachar. Those are the tribes that we were given. But nowadays we call ourselves what? African-American, Black, Afro-American, Nubian. All of those things are by words because God never, you can never, you, be doing, you can't even read those words in the Bible. God never gave us those as our identity, as our race. Now jump to verse 32. Verse 32. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So he said, Our sons and our daughters will be given to another people. That happened. It's like you read, you see movies like 12 Years a Slave, uh, like Birth of a Nation. Our people were given to another nation. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with long before them all the day long. Like when you go to the auction block, you far, your last name might be Johnson. I don't know what's my Dexter. Dexter. Your last name is Dexter. So in the Dexter plantation, you will you will come up with your family, three of your daughters go there, and you go to another plantation. That's how it would work. That's why the scripture said your eyes will fail for long. You would long, we would long for our children to come back. Just like in 12 years of slave, she longed for her, her child to come back. She cried herself to death. 600 for the boy. Fair and How much for the little girl? Ah. Well, you have no use for her. One so young will bring oh, you no profit. No, 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 no. I cannot sell the girl. No, there's Please. heaps and piles of money to be made from Please. her. She's a beauty, one of the regular bloods. Sold, Eliza oh, and Platt, Splendor. Read. And fail with longing for them all the day long. Read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No economic might, no military might to get our children back. It happens today as well with CPS. We have children and take them from us. We have no might to obtain them back. It's a curse from God. Jump to verse 48. Verse 48. Come on. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. So God said, well, all of this, because you didn't listen to what I told you, remember verse 15, because you didn't listen to my commandments, you'll have to serve your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Mm -hmm. In hunger. In hunger. For food, we can't go to another black. Like if my brother, he, I can't go to him to get food. Because he doesn't own a store. He doesn't own, I can't even go to my people to get toilet paper or to get clothing. Read. And in thirst. So God said you would have to serve for hunger and for food and water, for hunger and thirst. <coughs> and in nakedness. Clothing. Read. And want of all things. Like, for example, if you die, in order to certify your death, you need a death certificate. You can't go to your people to obtain it. When you're born, in order for them to certify your birth, you need a birth certificate. You can't go to your own people to obtain it. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron. A what? A yoke of iron. There's only one nation on this earth, one people on this earth, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that have had, which are one people, that have had yokes of iron on their neck. How did we even get to America? We got here through slave ships. When we got off those ships, they put yokes of iron on our neck. There's no other nation that can say they had yokes of iron on their neck. It was a nation of people. This is why we say, this is, this is the proof that we are the Israelites. And why do we say, it matters that we had yokes of iron on our neck. Go to verse 46 right quick. Verse 46. Come on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So they, they is the curses. The curses will be upon you for a sign. Come on. And for a wonder. And for a wonder, read. And upon thy seed forever. Keeps happening. The sign is, just like you know it's dad on that sign, uh, the curses will be a sign upon us to show us in these last days, we are the Israelites. That's why it says they shall be upon you for a sign. When you look for people that serve for hunger, thirst, want of all things, they are the Israelites. Watch this, verse 68. Verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt means bondage. It's a Greek word, it means bondage. Read. With ships. The Lord brought us into slavery. How did we get to America? With what? With ships. Cargo slave ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there, there, once you get off the slave ship, what was going to happen? You shall be sold. You'll be sold as what? Unto your enemies. As what? For bondmen. Sold unto your enemies, the white man, as bondmen. 
Enslaved man. And what? And bound women. Enslaved woman. And what? And no man shall buy you. The word buy there is redeem you. Malcolm X couldn't redeem us. Martin Luther King couldn't redeem us. Uh, Marcus Garvey couldn't redeem us. We're still in the state that we're in. They said, the Bible just said, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites, were going to slavery on slave ships. That's how we prove today, like I said earlier, that we are the Israelites. And so through that, uh, our bishops have taught us, showed us these scriptures, we've read it ourselves, we've seen this, there's no other people on earth that this could be talking about than us. So that's why we say today that we are the Israelites. With that being said, with the proof, undebated proof, that we are biblical Israelites, right? Because I heard last week was here, I believe it was Pastor Shipman who stated that he do believe that we are the chosen people, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, that we are. Jesus was Jewish or black. Yeah, I'm sorry? Jesus was Jewish or black. He came from the tribe of Judah. Ju the exactly. tribe of Judah. Jesus was a black man came from the tribe of Judah, right? With that being said, the reason for these church blitz that we're doing is because when we examine majority of the Christian church, doctrines that stem from slavery. For example, you still go in a lot of churches. You still, I, we just went to another church and sat down with a church pastor down uh, downtown, and he had a huge mural How old is he? of a white image of Christ. The doctrine that came with that image is still being taught as well. For example, the law is being done away with, being one. You, you go in a lot of these churches, they selling you, they in the church all Sunday, and they selling you pork after service. So, you know what I'm saying? As the, well, the Sabbath day, the, for some reason, well, I, I can identify the reason, the Roman Catholic Church changed the biblical Sabbath day to Sunday. That I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And we start, pick that up in slavery. That was the one day that the slave hands, field Negroes, was given to rest throughout the week so that they can listen to Master teach, love your enemies. You know what I'm saying? God loves everybody. When these things are not found in the Bible, when you look in the Bible, God only loves one group of people. So it's our job. I want to read Ezekiel 3 and 17. This is why we come out here. This is why we had a church bliss. We, so what we're doing is going around. We're calling all the influential people in our neighborhood, the pastors, the deacons, the reverends. And we want to sit down and discuss the keeping of the commandments to bring us back to the commandments. Because God gave us this order. Listen to this. The book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. To the house of Israel. No other people are sent to prophets. The prophets is only sent to the people of Israel. Read them. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So, I know at times we may seem aggressive to the outside public, all right? But our charge from the Most High God is to give warning. There's pending destruction coming to this place known as America. You see World War III gearing up. The book of Revelation say the third woe is at hand. And it's coming. It's going to be fought with nuclear bombs. And majority of our people not prepared. And the Christian church is not preparing them. Read them. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and give us them not warning. So if we don't do our job, because y'all are brothers, our sisters, our, our uh, fathers, our mothers, you know what I'm saying, our children, our sons, our daughters. If we don't do our job and come back to the churches that we came out of and get in warning, read. The Lord speaks to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. If we don't stop the breaking of God's laws, the celebration of Christmas, New Year's, birthdays. I just see somebody come get handed a piece of birthday cake dead here in my face. You know what I'm saying? 
These are all the breaking of God laws. And it's the, the reason we in the situation we are in today. Because the only way to get out is by keeping the commandments. Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that do the commandments. Now this is the last book of the Bible. Read. That they may have right to the tree of life. Uh -huh. And may enter into the gates into the city. Mm -hmm. For without are dogs. For without is dogs. People who did, did not make it in. And who else? And sorcerers. And sorcerers. Modern day Christianity is paganism. From the root to the head, it all stems from paganism. Even the cross stems from the pagan god Tammuz. There was crosses thousands of years before Christ put to death. There was, there was crosses. And it was all for the worship of a false god. The Sunday worship, which is the worship of, of the, the sun god Ra. As leaders, we gonna be held accountable when you present yourself as a bishop. I don't know the correct title. I want to make sure I refer to y'all as y'all correct titles. Pastors, the deacons. Yeah, but somebody looks to you as their pastor. You know what I'm saying? You know you 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 are. That might be a humble statement. Just be like, okay, I'm ready. But somebody looks at you as their guiding light to God. You feel what I'm saying? Somebody who, you know. So if we not telling them what they have to do in order to get to the kingdom, which is keep the commandments, we're going to be in error in that day. And we're going to be held accountable. Would you do you agree with that? Deep? You don't. I agree that I'm held accountable by what I teach. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this, 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 and I mean, y'all said a lot, you know, and it's, it's Let's let's unpack it a little bit. One thing you said was that uh, we're in this situation because we didn't keep the, we don't keep the commandments, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, so I mean, what what what? So what is what? It, so you wait, you want you you can do so you you do you can. You Okay, so let me ask you this. All right, let me ask you this. So you you you, you led off by saying we believe the Bible, That's right. right? So so are we talking about the whole Bible, all sixty six books, the whole book? Are we taking all eighty books? Are we taking all of that in consideration? All eighty books. All eighty books. Are we taking all of that? Yes, sir. Taking all yes, sir. So <laughs> so what 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 type of Bible do you have? Sixty nine eleven King James. What type of Bible do you read? Same. They all read King James 1611 originally. Okay, okay that's, that's cool. Uh, so, so when you say that the reason that the world is the way it is is because we don't keep the Ten Commandments, how do you know that to be true? Because when I think about the world of the way it is, I am reminded of the beginning and how the Bible says that everything came to be. Uh, 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 the Bible says that He, God created man in His own image, His own likeness. Right. Right. He, he, he placed that man over a garden. Out of that man, He created a woman. And in that garden, that man and that woman dwell together in communion or relationship with God. Uh, in that garden, uh, uh, God said, What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Hey, you can eat from any tree that you want, except this one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. And they, um, 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 and, and the story goes on to say that, hey, the serpent, Satan came and tipped it, tempted it. The woman, he, he was able to convince her that um, this tree was good. God said, hey, the day you eat from this tree, you will surely die. And so what we know as Satan, he is a, a, a tempter of man. He is a, a liar. He, 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 he twists He twists the truth. He twists He twists the truth to make it seem correct. Right? And so... He was able to convince her to eat from this knowledge of tree of good and evil, and which she did, and she saw that it was good, and she did not die. And so she went to her husband, who knew what God had said, 
and he ate from it too. <laughs> and so the thing here is they, they, they didn't die at that particular point of physical death. But they experienced separation from God. They were put it out of the the, 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 the the Garden of Eden. But with that disobedience came a lot more. So, I mean, if we look at how uh, mankind was cursed, and, I, I, and when I say mankind, I mean literally mankind. The world we live in was cursed. Because if we, I, 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 have to, I have to go to it and, 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 and read it to get a, um, Where are we going? Oh, we're going to go to Genesis. Let me find it real quick. Oh, so 316. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know how this was going to go. Genesis 316. Uh, so three, no, seven, yeah, seven, yeah, seven, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. So we, we, we got the curse of the woman. Uh, yeah, labor pains, all that stuff. You want man, though, 17. But yeah, we're going to go to 17. And he said to the man, because you have listened to your wife. And, let me read with the verse. Let me read you, King. Let me go to King James' verse. Let me pull that out. We got a reader. He can read it oh, so, yeah, so you can ahead. explain. Ahead, you know what I'm saying? Genesis 3 and verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Keep thorns and thorns also and thistles shall eat, bring it to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground. For out of it was thou taken, the dust thou art, and to the dust shalt thou return. Yep. Yep. So, so I mean, pretty much what I'm getting at is through the disobedience of one man, sin was 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 able to enter the world. So when we say, when you say, the the, the world is the way it is because of the Ten Commandments, I, I disagree with that because well because we don't keep the commandments, I disagree with that a little bit um, uh, because when I look at the condition of the world, I. I I believe it to be the way it is because of sin, right? Go ahead, bro. We agree with that in the aspect of the world, right? Okay. The world the way it is because of sin. But what we refer to the commandments, we refer to our people. And so, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So, and you know, we, we're not talking about the so, entire so that, aspect. We're talking about and, this people. And so I, I look at that and even in regards to people. See, people are the way they are because of sin. That that's 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 just the that's just the that's just the way it is. And we may be saying the same thing because if you if if, if I say somebody's the way they is because of sin, that sin could lead them not to obey God. Because you you see, simply simply put, Adam didn't obey. And we know that obedience to God is something we should do, right? So I'm just I, what I'm trying to I'm just trying to I'm trying to bridge the gap. So I want to ask you a question. I understand what y'all understand. I want to ask you a question. So okay. the officer here, he went through the book of deuteronomy mm -hmm. chapter 28 mm -hmm. and the book of deuteronomy is written to is it written to all men or just to israelites so me i believe it's just written to israel right that's that's, 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 that's what you said right so deuteronomy one and one yeah, but right. you said that's that's a, that's, that's right. correct state right listen to the book of deuteronomy chapter one and verse one uh -huh. these be the words which moses spake unto all israel right. on this side jordan so this is moses speaking to israel so when we get to 28 the context haven't changed. Mm -hmm. So in the book of Deuteronomy 28, he speaks specifically about a group of people mm -hmm. going into slavery for their sins. And so, okay, go ahead, finish your thought. Right, so, to, so my question would be, do you not agree that our slavery was biblical prophecy like Moses stated? So so here's, here's the, here, here's the, because I heard you when you went through it. Here's, here's a couple of, couple of issues I have with that, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just ask you, question when did slavery occur when did it occur what you talking about this particular when, slavery or I'm talking about, like you said slaves being brought from from africa to america when did that occur wow around 1400 1400 okay 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 so 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 if we if we just look at the time frame so so let me just let me so what you're saying is uh, what did you just read? Isaiah? What, it was Isaiah. Was it in Isaiah that, we, that you had read about? I think it was in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was jumping. But I'm going to Deuteronomy 28. So would you say, so so you're saying that Deuteronomy 28 was a prophecy that is applic applicable to slavery that happened 14 in 1400s? Absolutely. Let me explain. Let me explain. Even, even though this was... Cause, cause it, yeah, so let, me let me explain. Let me explain. Give me Deuteronomy 28 46. Mm -hmm. And then I want uh, Second Ezra 5 42. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 46. You said 45. 
Verse 25. Right. Because your question is, how is it that in Moses' time, reading about something that was 2,000 years before it happened in... It's a lot more than 2,000 years. Right, okay, it was like 4,000 years before it happened in the 1400s when Christopher Columbus came and started taking slaves yeah. from America. Read. Moreover, all these curses... So all of these curses that we read about... Mm -hmm. Remember I was reading 26 or 37, yeah. yeah? Read. Shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. It will pursue you. Read. And overtake thee. Pursue means it's, it's constant. Yeah, I got you. Overtake, that's yeah. constant. Mm -hmm. Read. Till thou be destroyed. Read. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Come on. To keep his commandments. Read. And the statutes which I command thee. On thee, and they shall be upon thee. So they is the curse that he just said in verse 45. Read for a sign uh -huh. and for a wonder and what and upon thy seed forever. So when did our seed start? Uh, you talking about just 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 generally? Yeah, when did our start? Started creation. Right. Yeah. So then, from creation, yeah. you had sun, sun, sun. Yeah. It got to the point where men became sinners. They got the laws of God from Moses. Yeah. Our seed uh -huh. got the laws of God from Moses, and then they committed sin. Yeah. And what happened? Uh. Watch this. Somebody give me Matthew 1 and 17. I'll go to 2nd Ezra first. 2nd Ezra chapter 5 and verse 42. Because he just said the curses that will be upon your seed forever. So what happened once once that sin started, once we broke God's commandments, because at that time we agreed to do what God said. Exactly. He said, if you don't do what I say, yeah. exactly. this is what I'm going to do to you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And he said to me, I will liken my this judgment. 2nd Ezra 542 read. I will liken my judgment unto a ring. To God's judgment, which is the, the curse he put on us, is like a ring. A ring is over and over. So how would that apply to today? Uh, before America, Rome ruled the earth. Who was in slavery in the time of Rome? Our people. Christ was a part of the Roman captivity. Remember they had to they had was, to give those they That's had what to the give people thought. That's what they, when he money came, to see to free us. Right. They thought they were coming to free us. We said yeah. now is not the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then before that time, Babylon. Well you had Greece. Greece. I'll start there. Greece. Before Rome you had Greece. We were enslaved. Watch this uh second Maccabees six and verse six. What happened in the time of Greece? The same thing that happens in America. Watch. Well, the Bible will show you. Second, second Maccabees chapter six, six and verse six. Come on. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. So at the point, it got to the point where you couldn't keep a Sabbath day. You couldn't go to the Sabbath. Just like it happened in the Spanish, if you know any about history, in the Spanish Inquisition, uh, in Spain and Portugal, the black Jews were having the same thing done to them. Come on. Or ancient feasts. Mm -hmm. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. Read. Mm -hmm. And the day of the king's birth, read. every month they were brought by so on the king's birthday. You know, we celebrate birthdays today. It's against God's law. But the king, on every king's birthday, most of the time we were in slavery, they would be killing us for sport. Come on. They were brought by bitter constraint. Bitter constraint. Read. To eat of the sacrifices. Eat the pork. Read. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, come on, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. So boom, that was curses that happened to us in Greece. Before Greece, you had Persia and Medes. Mm -hmm. Under the Persian and Medes, we were enslaved. Before that, you had uh, Babylon. Under Babylon, those curses, the South, what I'm saying is, from the time when we started to break God's laws, those curses have been upon us. Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and now where are we? America. All right, let's, let's add to his point. When you read the book of Judges, the whole book, the curses, they sparingly come upon us. Like when you read about Samson, right. the Philistines was over us. Then you read about uh, Ehud, then you got the Moabites over us. You read about Deborah. It was another group of people, uh, Ammon, that was over us. They they had took in charge because we had broke God's commandments. Now in this day, we so come so far from the commandments that our whole nation is in captivity and not only that we no longer know who we are anymore majority of our people yeah. right. so that's why i was going to read matthew 1 and 17. matthew chapter 1 and verse 17 come on so all the generations from abraham to david are 14 generations see and from david into the carrying way into babylon what and from david into the carrying way into babylon mm -hmm. are 14 generations see and from the carrying away into babylon unto christ or 14 generations so from babylon so it said 
from David until the carrying away into Babylon. David ruled the earth at one point. You read about David, Solomon. They ruled the earth at one point. After Solomon, you had Rehoboam, the, the nation of Israel. This is a quick synopsis. The nation of Israel split into two nations. That's when the nation went off into idolatry. Part of the nation went off into idolatry. That's why when you read in the they New Testament. They departed from the covenant. Right, they departed from the covenant. That's why the, when you read in the New Testament, uh, Peter didn't deal with the northern kingdom like that. And so from David unto Babylon, that Babylon was the start of our captivity. And then from Babylon, it said 14 generations from Babylon to Christ. Even after Christ, there has been captivity. So from Babylon to uh, Persia, to Greece, Rome, boom, and there's Christ. And after that, there has been captivity. So the, the, your question was, uh, if I remember correctly, how does, how does 1400s, how does the 1400s correlate with what Moses is saying? It, it, it does because the word it says the curses will be upon us forever as a ring. So from that time until even until now, over and over, we've been cursed. We had saviors come and help us out. Get cursed again. We had saviors come and help us out like Persian and Medes. Who rose up? Nehemiah, Joshua, Zerubbabel. Same thing in Rome. Who rose up? Christ, the 12 disciples. But now we were trying to do the same. So, so here's the Can I read one more scripture? Okay. Sorry. So this was what Christ stated in the book of Revelation of concerning the curse, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it's like a ring, like he stated. It keeps happening over and over. Look, if we see it, it's going to happen again, right? But listen to this. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. So this is at the end. When Christ set up his kingdom upon earth, he said, then what? And there shall be no more curse, Free. but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall, shall serve him. So once Christ's kingdom is set on the earth and he set back up, that's the only time that the curses won't come back. Won't because we won't see it. It won't be no more seeing on earth. So, so, I got a question. Yes. so then if that is the case, then what's the point? If we have to wait until Christ um, kingdom is set up on the earth other than that we have to keep dealing with the curse then what is the point what is the point of following the law or not following the law it doesn't matter because once his kingdom is set up on the earth then the curse is going to technically be broken based on what you're what i'm understanding you're saying okay, all right what uh, is the so you're saying what is the point of keeping the commandments or not or not keeping the commandments because the curses are upon going to be upon us until uh because you're so you not going to see the curses be off you if you don't keep the commandments. Because only those that will be saved is those that's keeping the commandments. Okay, and the faithful person. I want to just read the scripture to prove it. Can I touch on that? Just to prove my point, what no, I'm saying. Because this might answer a question. That, because that, go ahead, go ahead. like this, the statement didn't make sense to, in, in my head. Okay. Um, so you said that the curses will continue until Christ comes, Christ comes back and sets up his kingdom on earth. Mm -hmm. The only people who will be saved once his once his kingdom is set up on the earth are those who keep his commandments. Right. So it's not about his kingdom being on the earth. It's say that say that person again. I got a little bit lost. Say it again one more time. See, yeah. That, say it one more time. So that's how I'm hearing it in my head. That's why you just you said it's it. not about that's when. So it's not about Christ coming. It's about me keeping his commandments because. Him setting up his kingdom on earth doesn't matter for me if I don't keep his commandments. Correct. If it don't matter for you. Cause you cause that's why I say, blessed are they who keep his commandments and the faith of Christ. You have to have both paired together. I'm going to show you what I mean. Second verse 9. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou understand that it's the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So this is, he starts to visit the earth before the return of Christ. The Lord gonna look down and start doing things in the earth. What are you gonna do? Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, we see it now. Read and uproars of the people in the world. Turn on the news. You see that all over the news, right? Read. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Uh huh. For like as all is made in the world have in the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Now jump to verse seven. Verse 7, uh -huh. and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape 
by his works. Those that's going to be saved and that's going to see that day where there's no curse and it's beautiful and we don't keep the commandments and we under Christ. Read. Escape by his works and by faith. Where they, they're going to escape by their works and by faith. Where you read that from? This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 9. They're going to be saved by their works and their faith in Christ. Read. Whereby ye have believed. <laughs> Shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation. Those that's going that keep the commandments and faithful Christ, they gonna be preserved. The King James six and eleven. That's it. That's yeah, it. King James six. That's what, that's what that is. Just King James six and eleven. That's kind of conflict. That's a special to. Hey, um, so so same as James. Can you know, you know, I, wanted touch on, I wanted to okay. touch on that point from the New Testament because to answer your question, why would Christ matter uh, according to the King? You have to look at the purpose of Christ. Wait, it wasn't that why yeah. Christ matter. I thought that's what you said. What's the, what is the purpose? He said, what is the point, point to keep it? Right, keep right. what's the point? The purpose, we don't make it so now, that, this is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm saying is, uh, you're saying, what's the point of keeping the commandments, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Christ is the point. So I'm going to answer your question with, with this. Go to Acts 13, 38. You have to look at the purpose of Christ uh, and the reason why he came when you examine the scriptures. I'm going to show you through the New Testament. Uh, based on what the brother said, it'll, 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 the New Testament will confirm what he just said. Go ahead. The book of Acts. Actually, places. So give me a second. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. So why did Christ come? Let's read that. Be it known unto you, therefore, meaning bread. This is Peter talking when you read Acts 13. Come on. That through this man, through this is, man, which is Christ, read. It's preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. The reason why you have to keep the commandments, and when you break the commandments, is sin. Sin, the definition is First John 3 and 4. Sin is the transgression of the law. When you're in the midst of sin, that means you broke God's law. So what he's saying is, this man has been set up for the forgiveness of sin. Watch this, read. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things. Read. From which you cannot. But we forget, because we say, oh, we justified from all things. But we forget the next part. <laughs> read on. From which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Now. Nah. If this begs the question, who was under the law of Moses? The Israelites. Us. We've always been under the law of Moses. It's the only people that have been. It also begs the question, why would the law of Moses matter? It says, which you could not be justified for under the law of Moses. Because under the law of Moses, when you committed adultery, what would happen? You would die. Under the law of Moses, if you broke the Sabbath day, you would die. That's number 15. Through Christ, you now have the forgiveness of that sin to be able to go back and keep the commandments properly. You have mercy. This is what he's saying. Now go to Hebrews 9, 22. The reason why you have to keep the commandments is because you need a, you need a sacrifice for your sin. You still with me, Pastor? Right? Yeah. You need a sacrifice for your sin. When you sin, you have there has to be a sacrifice. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. Come on. And almost all things. You hear what he said? Almost all things, not everything, come on, are by the law purged with blood. So whose blood had to be shed if you committed adultery? Mine. Your blood. But if you committed, uh, let's say, what's something you didn't have to die for? Stealing. Let's say you stole something. Whose blood had to be shed? Stealing. No, not yours. You can I offer an animal. An animal's blood would be shed. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? You can offer that animal for sin offering, and you would be clear. That's why I said almost all things are by the law purged with blood. So now, whose blood is our sacrifice? Jesus' blood. That's the number one sacrifice. But that doesn't negate the fact that you have to keep the commandments. Watch this, Hebrews 9 and 15 now. Wait, wait, wait. Hebrews 9 and 22? Mm -hmm. Did you finish that? I think it's so much it was finished. It wasn't done? Oh, my bad. Yeah. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Come on. And without saying the blood. That's good. I'm, I'm glad. Pastor Ray, you all right with me, brother. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. Good. And without shedding of blood, uh -huh. there's no remission. You see that? Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness for sin. This is why the commandments matter. Because when you break the commandments, you're in the midst of sin. And you have to offer something. That's how you had to do it in the Old Testament. But now we have Christ. So Even though you have to still keep the commandments, so there has to be... His blood covers blood sacrifice a mistake sacrifice. that you make. Animal sacrifice. Let's say, right, under Christ, mm -hmm. you commit uh, a sin. Yes. Christ's blood has been shed for you so that you can still keep the commandments and not die for that sin. Right. That's why we read Acts 13. Mm -hmm. He said, under Moses, you would die. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now you have Christ. But that doesn't mean you stop keeping the commandments. You see what I'm saying? So that's very different from what I've heard said previously. Right. Because what I've heard said previously is we keep the commandments in order to be saved. Yeah. What I heard you say was um, Christ uh, died for Christ died for our sins to get us to a place that we can keep the commandments. Is that what you said? No, I'm saying Christ, I'm saying you always have to keep the commandments. Only the way to get saved is by keeping the commandments. Okay. But what I'm okay. saying so, is So what's the point of Christ then if, if, if that's 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 what I'm answering. So the because, point of Christ. The point of Christ is to save you. Watch this. Read Hebrews 9 15. Because if we look at the hip why are you getting that? If we look at the history of Israel, they were never able to keep the commandments. They were, they were never able to keep them. We, 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 they are you. So you keep, they are answers. So you keep all you keep all the answers. You, yeah. you keep all every single one. Yeah, just not the law of sacrifice. Every you keep every single one. Yeah, we just got we just finished celebrating uh, the feast of dedication. What, what's what's that sweater made out of? Cotton. What? Cotton, hundred percent. Hundred percent cotton. Okay, okay. So so for you to say you keep every so so for you to say you keep every single one, what is to say you perfect? Because perfection in the God in the eyes of God is to be morally perfect. That's to keep the law. There would be no need for Christ's sacrifice if Israel was to be able to keep the law perfectly. There would have been no need for Christ. So did you hear Acts thirteen? Acts five thirty one. Read again. Go ahead, Acts thirteen thirty eight. Acts thirteen. You had Acts five thirty one. Yeah. You read that as well. I like that. Go to go to Acts five thirty one. You know what I mean. And I think you you misheard when we said it as well. Right? We never said you have to keep the law. We said you have to keep the law and the faith of Christ. Okay, so okay. because what I'm telling you is, is you nobody can keep the law without Christ. Exactly. Because the, right now that, that's a, that's a contradiction. Because you're saying you're saying how can you say how can you say listen hold on how can you say you need to keep the law to be saved but you can't even keep the law without Christ? Can I read one scripture for you? Before we go to Matthew, yeah, right. Right. listen to you. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. So now, we are in agreement Matthew that 18, 16, there's no con contradictions in the Bible. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You agree with that it's too, as well. That's, 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 that's not a mistake. That. Revelation right. chapter 14, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. So is that, you read that for? this is Revelation 14 and 12. So it's so to say that that's a contradiction would be to say the Bible is a contradiction because it read it one more time. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So the saints that are patient, they are be will be those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. They all when you read the Bible, they always pair together. Sorry, what was that? What was that? Revelation 14 verse 12. Read it one more time. Revelation. Wait, wait, make sure. You, oh, uh, I got you. Yeah, I got okay, you. I got you. cool. Let's get it. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Uh -huh. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. So we're not saying that not to keep the faith. That's not what we're saying at all. Right. A lot of times I think people do hear us. People hear us hearkening so much on the commandments that they think that's all we push. But we hearkening on that portion because... The majority of the churches, they have the faith in Jesus, see, but they not keeping the commandments. So that's why they hear us hearkening see, on the commandments. See, but see, my, my only, my only issue, see, my, my only issue with everything y'all say, right, is the fact of how we get there. See, I believe that I am, I am saved by faith through grace. We done been there. But, and I believe apart from the works, so we can go to Ephesians 2 and 8, we can go to Romans 3, 28, we can go to these verses that tell me that, hey, um, 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 I'm saved by faith. I'm saved by grace through faith apart from works. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I recognize that I, I, I come, I come to, to, to I, I place my trust in the Christ. I come to Christ, right? So I, I, I'm, I'm from a camp where I don't believe that I'm, I'm saved by works. So I don't, I, I'm not saved by anything I do. So how but would I'm you saved, explain the scripture we just read? Let me just. Uh, Could you just explain that scripture to me? So, so, so you read, you read uh, Revelation. So I, this calls for endurance from the saints. Who, who, who keeps God's commandments and their faith in Jesus? I, he, I mean, what's it? No, this is a, I read CSB, Christian oh. Standard Bible. It says, "Then I heard a voice." Let's 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 see if we can put some. Let's see if we can put some to this. I'm gonna start at verse nine. And another, a third angel followed them and spoke with a loud voice, 
If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will also drink the wine of God's wrath, which is poured full strength into a cup of his anger. He will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the sight of the holy angels and in the sight of the Lamb. Yeah. And the smoke of their torment will go up forever and ever. There is no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast in his image or anyone who receives the mark uh, of his name. Then 12, this calls for endurance from the saints mm -hmm. who keeps God's commands from their uh, commands and their faith in Jesus. So one thing I know about Revelation, right, is Revelation... Um, so do, do you guys know, or you probably do, I'm sure you probably read all of Revelation. So we know Revelation, we got the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. Yep. He is called up into the third heaven. He sees a vision. God's giving him this vision. So 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 are you reading Revelation as something that's this is happening currently? Or are you reading as this is something to happen? Because when I read, when I start at verse 9 and I read to 12, he is using a lot of words. He says, he says, um... He, 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 he gives us an example. He gives us a, a state. He says, if anyone worships the beast, if, if, if pretty much he, 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 and he, and he ends in 12 with a solution for this to endure. He says so the endure. solution for what? So he says, if anyone worships the beast. And no, he says a solution for what? Uh, for the, for, for, for the, the for judgment the, for worshiping for the, the beast. Issue he gives. For so the issue for he the gives. judgment for worshiping the beast, the solution is keeping the commandments in faith and Christ. So, so, so here's the thing, though. But we, what, what time frame are we talking about? The book of Revelation is a deep book. We all know that. Yeah, yeah. it's absolutely wonderful. Love it. But the words of Christ are plain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we go to Matthew? The statement was, how do we know that you have to keep the commandments to be saved in that day? Is that the patience, right? Yeah. Read what you got. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh-huh. And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? If you have eternal life, then we know these people did not drink of the cup. These people did not drink of the cup of the beast. They did not die. These people lived. These people had the patience of the saints. So they didn't feel the wrath of the Lord. They didn't feel the wrath. Read. And he said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Mm -hmm. I think I I think I just misunderstood something. You said the people that had eternal life did not die. They did not die in the second death. We talking these people that I'm with you. Okay, read again. And he said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Mm -hmm. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. You got to keep the keep commandments. Reading. Keep reading. You got to keep the commandments. Because keep reading. We're going to keep reading. But you, do we agree that Christ said you have to keep the commandments? Keep, keep, we don't agree that he just said. No, 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 I'm not skipping over that. But we let's put context on it. Because yeah. Jesus ain't done talking. Keep reading. I agree. Let's go. He said to him, mm -hmm. which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, mm -hmm. honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So now he says, keep the commandments, right? Yeah, the rich young ruler, I believe it's the incident about the rich young ruler. Yeah. Yep. He asked him, which ones? And then Jesus tell him, tells him which ones. And then 20, he says, what do he say in verse 20? Verse 20, the young man said to him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? What did he say? Jesus said to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. So, so does that negate? So that, that, I'm not negate. Don't okay, not negate. So but what I'm saying, so what I'm saying is, you, you just read that says, Hey, Jesus said his answer was, Keep the commandments. Got it. Good. Great. Uh, Jesus tells him which commandments to keep. The, the young man's response was, I have kept them all. Did he say? Did so Jesus he right? say all the commandments? No, Jesus was real specific. But I'm saying, well, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not asking you a trick question. No, he said keep the commandments. The, the and he started reading, reading what type of commandments? He, he started reading the commandments from the Ten Commandments. Right? Murder, but did not, he read them all? No, he didn't. Which ones did he read? Don't murder. The rest of them. No, he which ones did he murder. read? Did he read? He didn't say love thy God with all thy heart. So do can yes. we break that? No, we went down. We gotta keep going. Don't murder. He said, don't commit adultery, don't steal, mm -hmm. don't bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and love thy neighbor as thyself. So is that the only commandments we have to keep? No. But hold, but hold, but hold. That's my, so my, my, my question is like, what was the point? Like, I'm trying to see where your point was at. But, so, 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 here's a, so here's the thing. I, I was trying to follow up to fact. So what did the young man do? 
he was had a covetous spirit. He lost or not covet. Okay. So, he said, "Go with it. Sell what you had." So, so he was so, telling him that your spirit gonna keep you out the kingdom. Wait, okay. So, so exactly, it's covetous spirit. What is our definition of covetous spirit? Go to go to is go to Romans seven, seven and seven. Romans chapter seven and verse seven. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin? God forbid. No, the law is not sin. Right? Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. The only reason we know what sin is. Okay. The only reason we know what sin is, is because of the law. Majority of our people would say, I'm a sinner. Right? right? Yeah. Can we all agree? Yeah. Right? So agree. For I have for I had not known lust for sin. Except the law has said, Thou shalt not covet. So covetous is that lust, that desire, that greed. That's covetous. But now the point was, we all will say we are sinners, right? Read that First Timothy one and eight. Let me let me just read one more scripture to follow up. Understand the definition of covetous. It just told you. But I keep reading because Paul is making a point there. Wait, so that's not. It said, "Thou shalt not covet." That didn't give a definition of it. Well, you would not know what lust is unless the law says thou shalt covet. When you read the law, it says, "Do not covet your your neighbor's wife or any of his possessions or any of." When you read it, it's right. We had a wrong yeah. What shall we say then? Is the law saying, God forbid, that I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, lust. except the law I had said. Thou so, not, not so what's lust? So lust is thing, your, your thing that covetousness and lust are cheap. Okay, so you know what it is. I you to be afraid we are here in the slums, in the ghettos. Like, like, subscribe, comment, like share, all that good stuff. If you want to see more school. content like this, you subscribe. Towards but I feel like we're deflected from the point of You're right. go to Romans three. Keeping the command. Romans three and twenty. Romans three and twenty. Let's go there. Are you gonna explain it, Pastor Shakeman? That's right. Yeah. You said you're gonna explain this. Yeah, right? I'm. A, we're gonna read three of them, and uh, let's start at Romans three twenty. Twenty down to four, or are you saying three scriptures? Uh, three different scriptures. Oh, okay, okay. Romans three and twenty. You know, Romans three verse twenty. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. We can do 21. Verse 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. All right. And then Galatians 3. 24. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And 25. Verse 25, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. And then Ephesians, I think, 2 and 15. 2 and 3? Uh, 2 and 15. Ephesians 2 and 15. Mm -hmm. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make him in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Let's do 16 too. Verse 16, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. That's what, 17. <laughs> 17, they came and preached peace, peace to you, which were far off, and to them that were not. What time is it? 17. Okay. Do we need to explain that? Where you want me to say? Yeah, I would like you to explain. Romans 3. I'll go back to Romans 3. 3 and 20. Yeah. Romans 3 and 20. Um, we go start at verse 9. Uh, he talks about none of the lies. Uh, uh, chapter verse 9? Where are you at? I thought you said verse 20. No, I just went up. Yeah, oh, so what they were talking about. Yeah. Uh, but you want to start verse 20, oh, 20? He goes into, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there show no flesh be justified in his sight. So what does that mean? Um, that the law doesn't cause justification. Which law? Which law? The same law we've all been sitting here talking about. Oh, that's right. So read verse 31 then. Okay. Verse so 31. Want to yeah. read. Okay. Huh? Okay, you want him to read? You got it, Pastor Jim? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you read that one then? Do we then make void the law through faith? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So then what law is that? And what law the is the one in law. verse 20? And then we have to figure out. Go to 27. We where then is boasting it is excluded by what kind of law by no by one of works question mark no he answers it on the contrary by the law of faith mm -hmm. what is the law of faith revelation 14 12. No. law of faith trusting in christ that's the whole point what scripture is that 
Let's go through that. Let's go through that. Can I say one thing what Pastor Shipman said, right? When you just read 31, it said we established the law. What do that mean? We stand on it. We stand on the law? We stand on the law. But it just says... So why would he stand on the law if he's saying... You can't be justified. I'm trying... I want to understand. If you're saying we stand on the law... I don't... What do you mean by stand? What what, what would that mean, stand on the law? It would be our foundation. It would be what we build on top of. I don't... I live in a house that has a foundation. If I don't have a foundation, I don't have a house. See, See, the problem is when we read Romans... Paul is writing this to who? The Romans. Which are who? Like what group of people are these people? Gentiles. 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 That's incorrect. Let's go to Romans 2. That's okay. the problem is when Paul writing this, this is complex. And you give me first Peter, right? I mean he's writing he, believers. Though. It's believers there, but it's Gentiles in it as well. Okay, <clears throat> but who is he writing to? Let's know who he's writing to. Romans 2 and verse 17. Who was Paul sent to? First Peter 3. You know, you want to talk about uh, Peter Paul writing? Yeah, you know the one. Romans chapter 2 and verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew. A what? A Jew. He's writing to Jews, read. And rest this in the law. These Jews are people who teach the law. He's writing to the teachers of the church in Rome. He this dude the letter wrote to, to the leaders of the church in Rome. Read. And makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will. And the poorest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. So these teachers was instructed out of the law to a level that we as the people never been instructed out of the law. They grew up in the law. They was uh, circumcised on the eighth day. Seriously. They understood the law, right? The problem is what Paul is writing to people who understand the law. So when we get to verse 3 and it says you are no longer under the law, these people understood exactly what Paul was saying. problem is y'all don't. The law that it's referring to is the sacrificial law. And I'm going to show you what Peter said about Paul Wright. Listen to this. I do, I do not disagree with what you have said. So I would just like to point out. Can I read one scripture? I listen to four scriptures. Pastor, can I just read this? Almost. Yes, y'all, almost. I can listen to y'all for an hour and 15 minutes. I agree, but let's go one at a time. So, okay, no, we, we're not cutting each other off. we go there, I just want to look at. I agree with you. I'm saying I agree with you. That the, you agree that the law that you're referring to is the sacrificial agree. law. Here's but you didn't say that earlier. You said earlier, you said all the laws we've been talking about. Right. We've been talking about murder. We never brought up the sacrificial law. I agree with you. We we <clears> brought up the sacrificial law last week. But here's what it is. I agree 100% with you. And this is where I stand on it. Uh, 12, same thing. Romans two, 12 and 13. Romans 12 and 13. Romans 2. Romans 2. 12 and 13. Oh, Romans 2. Romans 2. Same thing. I moved that. We, we still have Romans 2. 2 and 13. 12 and 13. Sorry. Yeah. Romans chapter 2 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. Mm -hmm. And as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Mm -hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Mm -hmm. So what law is that? Read it again. Read it again. Read it 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Go back to 12. Now go back to 12. Verse 12. For as many have sinned without law shall perish without law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. That's mm -hmm. where I stand. I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. The issue is it may be just my ignorance. It may just be my religious upbringing. Mm -hmm. Even though most of that stuff I don't necessarily agree with either. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I don't believe that I'm being judged by the law. And because mm. I don't believe I'm being judged by the law, I won't be. And so can I, can I read so, this? So read 14. Hold on, hold on, let, me so, let me read something right quick for Pastor. Go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. So I heard you say, believe that you're not being judged by the law. So I want you, does Christ judge? Yeah. Of course, right? As a matter of fact, what will he judge? Thing. What will he judge men on? Right now, our hearts. Our commitment to him, our obedience to him. Okay, so good. Read that. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse ten. Yeah, that's what I want. Good job. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. the judgment seat of Christ. Read. We yeah. must all. Every man, you. I don't know your name. What's your name? Yeah. Ed must appear. Pastor Ray, Dex. I don't know your name. Man, what's your name? London. London. Myself, as desired. All of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Christ is not going to judge on how you feel. He's going to judge on statutes and laws. Read. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. The things done in his body. Read. 
according to that he have done, mm -hmm. whether it be good, what is good? How do we define what good is? Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Because, Pastor, I disagree with what you just said. You don't believe you'll be judged on the law. I I wouldn't know Bible. I agree with the Bible said you will be judged off of what is good. God will define what good is. Come on. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Mm. Wherefore the law is holy, Read. and the commandment the law is what? Holy. The law is holy. The commandment is holy. And, and just the hand is just and what and is good. good is the law. Mm -hmm. So when you go back to Second Corinthians five, it said every man will be judged based read on according to that he have done, whether it be good, whether you keep the law, because that's what the definition of good is, come on. Or bad. Or bad. What is bad? Sin is bad. First John three and four. Then I'll I'll land my claim right there. First John three and four. I want to fit something for him too when he got. Y'all need to go back to. Uh, Hold on, let me know, finish this. How would you speak it? So y'all can go to fourteen. We're gonna yeah, go, we can go back, back to fourteen. Back to 14. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, we got. I got you, yeah, bro. Yeah, we, we. He came in late, man. Come on. First John three and verse four. Three. Whosoever committed sin mm -hmm. transgresseth also the law. This is the definition of good and bad. You can also read in Ecclesiastes twelve. This is what Christ got that for. Paul got that from. Uh, where it defines what good and bad is. Good is keeping the law. Uh, Pastor Ray, bad is what we're reading right now. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Read. I'll read it over. I'm sorry, I messed it up. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Transgresseth also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin, the definition of sin, is the transgression or the breaking of the law. That's what Paul is saying. You'll be judged off of what's good. You keep the law, but what's bad. Which is sin, you're breaking the law. This is where I always get, I, I feel some type of way because we never keep going because the rest of that says how. You want to read verse 5 again? 5 and 6. Go ahead. Verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Oh, you want me to explain it? Okay, so read verse 5 again. Verse 5. <laughs> and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. Boom, I like that. He was manif Christ was manifested to take away our sins. Something I was going to read before, which we missed, was Hebrews 9, 15. Go ahead. What does it mean when it says he was manifested to take away our sins? Our is the nation of Israel. All 12 tribes. Christ was manifested to take away our sins. Why? Why? What, what, what is the point of that? Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 9, and verse 15. Come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. So Christ, for this cause, what cause? Sin. He is the mediator of the New Testament. Read, or the New Covenant. Read. That by means of death. By his death. Read. For the redemption of the transgressions. Of the tr what is transgression? Sin. Of the transgressions of what? That were under the First Testament. So the sins that the Israelites committed under the First Testament, which was what? The Law of Moses. Under that First Testament. The sins that we committed, idolatry, all of those things, we have now a sacrifice for. Let's finish the scripture now. Can you go ahead, Jess? Read. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Because the promise is Christ. We can receive that promise of eternal inheritance because now we have a mediator. Now, because of sin that we did under the first testament, which you have died for, Christ came and abolished all of those sins that we committed. Now, through faith and keeping the commandments, you can have the gift. That's what that's what it's saying. If I'm hearing correctly, um, like I thought I heard it, but I, I think I missed it. Mm -hmm. But our salvation is based on Jesus' sacrifice, and yes. our continued salvation is based through uh, the work that we do in keeping the law. So Jesus only came for us, like the sacrifice. Jesus is for us. It's for us. It's, it's not for the Chinese. It's not for the Japanese. Uh, it's for us. Okay. Then what do we do? Because we're reading Paul's stuff. Mm -hmm. What's called to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Actually say Matthew 4 and 15. Um, there is neither Greek, Hebrew, yeah. nor Greek, nor Jew, nor male, nor female, nor bond, nor Scythian. Like, let, let, let me deal with what you're saying. Thinking. The Gentile. Why is Paul referred to the Gentiles? Okay. Paul does Paul refer to the Gentiles? Just say real quick. It's, it's quick cut. Good. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 15. 
Well, Sand is Hold on, hold on. Ray, this is your. Uh, Let me the water. You got water. Listen, does this proper water? Yeah, that's all I got. Bubbly is not good. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. So you said about the Gentile, right? Matthew 4, 15. The land of Zebulon. So who is Zebulon? Y'all have ever heard the name Zebulon? I know you've heard of the name. What is Zebulon? Zebulon is a tribe of Israel. Very good. Good. And the land of Naphtali. Naphtali is also another tribe of Israel. It's in the northern kingdom of Israel. Very important. Good. By the way of the sea beyond but, Jordan. So what do they call these northern kingdom uh, tribes by the Sea of Galilee? Galilee of the Gentiles. Oh, wait a minute. I thought they were of the 12 tribes of Israel. Good. Galilee of the Gentiles. So we see here that Zebulon, Naphtali, the other northern kingdom tribes that were around, they were called the Gentiles. Those were the Gentiles Paul's ministry is to they were cut off from the commonwealth of Israel because what we lack, I grew up in the Baptist church, what I never heard was the history of Israel. Why was it only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in Jerusalem? How come when you read John chapter 4, what is John 4? John 4 and 9. Because Christ talks to a Samaritan woman. You think she's a heathen. And in the disciples' mind, she was. Because remember, the disciples said, oh, we talk to her for. Read that. John chapter 4 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him. The woman of Samaria unto him. Read. How is it that thou, being a Jew, uh -huh. askest drink of me? She was tripping. Wait a minute. You're a Jew. Why are you talking to me? Because y'all don't deal with us. Okay, what? Why are you talking to me, a Gentile? That's what she's saying. Read. Which am a woman of Samaria. Mm -hmm. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. Go up where it says, Our Father Jacob. Verse 12. Yep. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? So she knew who she was. She knew she came from the 12 tribes. She, why would she say, are you greater than our father Jacob? The woman in uh, Matthew 15, when Christ told her to get away from me, the dog, why couldn't she say that? Because she wasn't in the part of our father Jacob. Read, finish that, and then uh, Dex, he, he been, he been no, still. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank and drank thereof himself mm -hmm. and his children and his cattle. So when you read that, Jacob, the patriarch of the twelve tribes, I forget where that's at. It should have a precept there. We don't have to. We don't have to read it. But Jacob, uh, he made that well for the twelve tribes. She says, "Our father Jacob," which shows you he's an Israelite. Hey, what's up, bro? Oh, you ain't subscribed yet? Man, look at this guy, man. You ain't right, man. Get the press the button. Press the button. You said it's not about the woman, right? Yeah, finish your So who was Jesus' mom? Mary. So she's a woman, right? You're tracking the bloodline. Where did the bloodline come in at? Because it didn't come through a man. You need to cut this conversation because they did say that Joseph did the father. Joseph. When the text said that Joseph oh. didn't want to put her away. So we want to keep things. Yeah, let's keep things. I want to hear you. I want to hear this, man. Because you went somewhere else. Wait, 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 wait. Order. So if y'all don't speak, we don't want to hear us speak. But y'all like to talk. Let's not talk to each other. So let's deal with what we're talking. So, 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 so. So did you not? So did you say that? That, that so God can't do that. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did you guys just say that Jesus only came for the twelve tribes? Twelve tribes? Yes, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. So what about, but what about what about John three sixteen? Three sixteen. That's, what, that's what he said, right? What about this though? Let's, yeah, John three sixteen. We know that, but what about this? No, are you he sure? Says, no. He says, no, I'm speaking to you Gentiles. Romans eleven. Romans eleven. Where you at? Uh, thirteen. He says, now I'm speaking to you Gentiles, and so far as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry, if I might somehow make my own people jealous and save some of them. For if their rejection brings reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? Now, if it's the first fruits are holy, so is the whole branch, the whole batch. Mm -hmm. and, if it's the, and if the root is holy, so are the branches. I'm sorry, where, where are you at right now? I'm reading 13. I just finished uh, verse 15. I'm, I just finished 16. I'm on 17. Oh, give us a second. Hold on. Yeah, we got it. I'm there now. I'm All right, now. 17, right? Yep. Okay, let's now, get Some of the branches will be broken off. Yep. And now, if some of the branches were broken off, and you, 
through a wild olive branch were grafted in among them mm -hmm. and have come to share the rich root of the cultivated olive tree, do not boast that you are better than those branches. But if you do boast, you do not sustain the root, but uh, but the root sustains you. Okay. And so I read that to say, I mean, for you to say that Christ only came, he came, of course, he originally came for the 12 tribes, mm -hmm. but they didn't receive him. And so, so, so the 12 tribes didn't receive Are you sure about that? I'm 100% sure about that. Not this. everybody. Received. They didn't receive him. Some people. So you're saying all of them. They didn't receive him. Not everybody. everybody. Go to Mark chapter 8. So that's, that's not true. No, it's on point. That's not true. So now Mark so 8, 31. Mark 8, 31. Mark 8, 31. Mark 8, 31. So to go off what you said, Dex, Mark 8, 31. And then we're going to go to uh, 9 and 31. John 9, 31? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mark chapter 8, 31. So Dex, real quick. What you said? Dex. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Let me finish what you said and then go get the church. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Come on. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected. Reject? You said all nations rejected. Let's see what the Bible says. No, that's not what he said. He said all 12 tribes. He said all 12 tribes. You said all 12 tribes. Rejected. He said his people, which is all 12 tribes. Go ahead. And be rejected of the elders. It's not all 12. And of the chief priests. And the chief priests. And scribes. And be killed. After three days and rise again. So here we see the Pharisees, the elders, and the chief priests reject Now I'll go to John 9 and 31. 8. 30. John 8, 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. Come on. Sweetie. Let the scripture speak. Conception. He said, that's the mountain. Conception. The you can do with that. It's no, it's no problem. Yeah. Do you know what it is, though? Yeah, of course. What is it? Let's read. John chapter 8, Let's verse 31. Let's focus on this point, and then we'll go to the macro conception. Read. Then says Jesus you know to those Jews which believed on him. He said, what? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him. He said, all 12 tribes rejected Christ. All 12 tribes wasn't even in Jerusalem. Listen, 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 listen. listen. But you understand, not all, not everybody listen, rejected Christ. Listen, but for you to say that Christ only came back for the 12 tribes is absolutely ridiculous. We can not, prove it, though. That's exclusive. Can, can I? Can I? Can I? No. That's I'm doing everybody before. I want to prove it. Go to Matthew 15. <laughs> Just, I'm about to go. And now you gotta go. You gotta go. Come on. He's gonna get up with that. Yeah, he's trying to get you out of here. No, he ain't trying to get him out of here. He don't want to burn you. Yeah, 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 he don't want uh, my wife just got back. Like I got kids, all of this stuff, and so because we do so much, like we got over here, understand? He's got other responsibilities. No, y'all busy. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Are sitting out there. Wait, we who wrote the van to church that he go on. Take back. This is why it'd be like, well, can yeah, we? Can we? Yes, and then it's like, dang. I can't. So that's shit. Can we make some fun statements? Because I think I gotta go. Basically, we. Sure. Right. Right. Y'all got another service. service. I just wanna make some fun statements, right? Fun, fun statements. Leave the floor. Okay. Right. Now, I, want, I want you to hear this is the portion of the final statement because I want to wrap everything up about that. Romans, you're right. about that, right? And then, get this Matthew 15. Wrap it up. Okay, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Hold on, hold on. Let the little baby. Who took it out? All right. Thank you. All right, let's get it. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Uh huh. But he answered and said, Now, this is Jesus Christ. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Out of his own mouth, he stated he is not sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Now, we're going back to Romans 3. Go back to Romans 3, because we haven't forgot about that, right? Because the point of us coming Where here... Where did you just read that from? This Matthew, that was Matthew 15, 24. Oh. The point of us coming here initially is because the commandments must be taught in the church. Right. And they're not being taught. Okay. Listen to this. Romans 3, what did they read? Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Uh -huh. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. Now, jump up to verse 31. Verse 31. Uh huh. Do we then make void the law through faith? Because Jesus Christ is now here, is the rest of the commandments gone. Read. God forbid. Why? Yea, we establish the law. The reason that y'all equate the law ab abbreviated above that we not under is all the commandments because y'all got a wrong understanding on the law. I'm going to show you what he means. Go to Romans 8, verse 1. This is the closing statement. You know what I'm saying? Closing statement. Romans, Romans 8, verse 1. Romans chapter 8. Because it's, it's obvious. It's obvious y'all don't believe. But listen to me. Read on. 
there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. The reason Christ came is to get rid of the condemnation that came through the law, which was death for sin. For the death for those. Death for homosexuality. Death for being effeminate. Death for breaking the Sabbath day. Death for celebrating birthdays. Death for all the things I've seen here in this church today. Christmas. Christ has came so you don't have to be instantly put to death. Who walk not after the flesh, uh -huh. but after the spirit. Read for the law of the spirit of life. The law of what? For the law of the spirit of life. Keeping the laws, the commandments under Christ. Read. And Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. The, the law of sin and death is what he's referring to. Jesus. The law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life. Well, that's what we do. We do that that for the thing. Read it again. You got to listen. You got to listen. Listen to understand not to rebut. But you just read it one more time. Good. For the law of the spirit of life. The laws. The keeping of the laws are not the commandments. Because the laws. Wait, 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 what you just said is wrong. Wait, go back. Where are you at? Romans yeah, Romans 8. Romans 8. Right? Verse 2. Verse 2. Read it one more time. Yes. For the law of the spirit of life. So the commandments under life, under Christ. The keeping of commandments under Christ. Meaning you don't get put to death. You Okay. We For 400 years, we've been keeping the Sabbath on Sunday as a people. It's Saturday. Wait, okay. So now, the, law of the, the, law of the, the keeping of the commandments is the commandment. without the animal sacrifice under Christ's sacrifice. It's the law That's the life. Yeah. Right. Read it one more time. Okay. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free. So the commandments under Christ, free, have made me free under what? Have made me free from the law of sin and death. Because the law of sin and death is the animal portion. Or death for you. Because uh, uh, sacrificial, you know, sacrificial lamb for uh, maybe your beard. There was some brothers who got their beard cut off. David told them, grow their beard back, come do a sacrifice. And come back in Jerusalem when your beard grow back. But the law of homosexuality, you instant stone. Ain't no, it's sin and death. So now keeping the commandments under Christ, now we have a time to learn it. Because for 400 years, they taught us, we, they taught us American customs. They called us Christmas. So now we have to relearn. That's why I say be born again. We have to erase everything we, we learned here and keep the commandments now under Christ. Because if you don't, First John chapter two verse four. It's we all start at verse three. Y'all know if you this was uh, against the law in the United States. Well, okay, okay, that's fine. It's, but now it's, it's, it's part it's of the law, law in the United States. States. But uh, but it's it's me and you can have a conversation about the Mac conception. Uh -huh. right? Why they ain't talking? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, they can do that. We can do that. We can two verse four. He that saith, I know him. If you say. I know Jesus. You have a relationship. I have a personal relationship with God. I am a pastor of Jesus Christ. Like y'all three say y'all are. I don't say I'm a, you, a deacon. A deacon is a high position in the Bible. First Timothy 3, again, you, you have to his, meet a certain criteria to be a deacon. Read. And keep his, not his commandments. But you don't keep the commandments of God. It is a liar. You are liars. And the problem with the Christian church is full of liars and hypocrites. If you do not repent, there is death coming for you. This is our warning to y'all. Sure. We ain't here to debate. So, we ain't here to argue. We ain't here to debate. You understand that? So, yeah, I guess. But, okay. That was your closing. That was my closing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we know. We know. Um, we know. Um, we about to leave. Yeah, you gotta, um, we about to leave. So, so, so. Just, just straight to the point. Straight they saying Jesus. Straight to the point. point. Straight to the yeah, point. Um, I don't think anybody ever said that. But good. The, 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 the disagreement that we had, I think, that we're probably never going to come to uh, agreement on is the fact of right. how is salvation gained. And you guys believe that salvation is gained by works. Simple. Mm -hmm. Keeping the commandments. That's, That's how we say Keep, we believe that you must keep God's law and the faith of Christ in order to get salvation. I don't believe that. As the I Bible. believe that. So what you're saying is you don't believe what the Bible said. I guess here's what my question would be. Because I, I read, because you gave me this before, and I read through it, I read through it again, and I went through it again, I went to the website, I read it. My question is, and maybe this is because of uh, uh, church trauma, but why don't we go to the mosques? Why don't I see y'all in front of We do sit down with the King of Paul. We do sit down with the Nation of Islam all the time. We got th a bunch of videos. We've been sitting down with the Nation of Islam. We do. Sit down? Yeah, yeah. sit down with the Nation of Islam. Because I'm going to tell you, have you ever, I remember I was... Uh, 14, maybe 12. Um, 
and uh, I went to this dude, he was talking to his son, I don't know, like, she had long hair, real light skin, um, and he decided he was going to talk to her, and so I decided I was going to go to his house and fight him. I showed up, come outside, nigga, come outside. He came outside, I got whooped. Uh, and when I got home, I did. I got home, and my mom was like, oh, you, you went to his house? Did you think that you wasn't going to get whooped showing up at his house? You don't think that it is um, aggressive isn't the word. Intrusive. Intrusive to show up outside somebody's house. Like, and you you, you said that we're, we're not for a debate, but if you show up at somebody's house mm-hmm. yelling outside, we, we want to talk. You don't feel like that. Look, we're the problems of God. Look, yeah. we look I'm going to help you understand. We are the problems of God. Okay. We are army of the living God. We're not the Christian church. The with the Christian, the church that you used to, that's not us. We not weak me. That's the point. Lo- so the point, of, the point that I'm going to point. Because you keep generalizing me. You don't know what I do. Who no, know. I know what is it? Whatever she church you used to, it ain't us. Everybody. It ain't us. Whatever yeah. church you used to, it ain't us. And I don't care if it's, you're right. it's I'm talking right. about you. Okay. You and you. Yeah. It, whatever church you guys are used to, is not us. Right. So, but that's why you're asking us this question. Yes. So our mission, when we come up, we teach with all authority. We're going to go out and we're going to go to and give our people warning. Like we read in Ezekiel 33, we sent to give the warning to the people. Right. Whether they hear or forbear. Well, that, that scripture, Ezekiel. So, so I, so I want to tell you why, why we did. Yell at your house. Show yeah. You yeah, that's why. Exactly. Because if you show up on Loretto, which is where my house is, yelling outside, I because somebody did. And you I don't go to the church. Going to the church. We go to the church. church. But that's the same thing Paul did. That's right. the same thing. Well, once you do it, Paul did, Paul did this. When you read Acts 17, I would want to answer your question. When you read Acts 17, mm-hmm. Paul did this. He stood on a hill right in front of the synagogue and was preaching. And they, I'm saying what y'all do is good. Having a discussion is good. Having being able to confront yeah, truth is right. amazing. Here's what the problem is. What I experienced last week. Yeah. What most people don't know about this church, mm-hmm. 70 to 80 percent of the church carries. One, two, ten. That's yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, the light skinned dude that was there was a cop. So he was standing there. If you have the video, you will be able to yeah. see. He knows himself. Right. Yeah, yeah, I no, stepped no. over onto that side because I wasn't going to yell. And I kept saying, I'm not yelling. So I stepped over to the side to have a conversation. And I kept saying, this you is not a scary. conversation. We're not here to fight. Just, we had a reason in But this is just like Paul. Like, but this is what just like, you. Uh, Isaiah and Isaiah and reasoning. That's what I'm saying. If you want to oh, reason with me, then you have to have a conversation. And I kept saying that. This is not a conversation. You just, and I'm yelling, yelling, yelling. I said, well, I got a microphone. I've had a microphone in my face and in my mouth since I was three years old. Pause. Pause? Pause what? You said something gay. So you got to say no homo or else you the homo. I know when somebody's yelling in a microphone. And so when we're trying to have a conversation, we can't have a conversation. And as a matter of fact, by the time we came over here on this side, it was, you keep cutting me off. I did start yelling. All I'm saying is, I like it. I like the drive. I love the challenge. You know what it makes me do? It makes me go right into my Bible and study some more and get some truths from y'all. This, I like this. What my problem was last week is it felt intrusive. Yeah. That's it. Right. We, see, we see now we don't agree with each other, right? We're going to kick up our dusty off, right? Y'all don't have to worry about us no more, right? But even though y'all, it don't matter how y'all feel, it was effective and it got us here today. Read what you got. It was only it's a good It's either chapter two or verse seven. Uh huh. words. Our point is to speak the words to you. Read. We appreciate it. they be here or whether they be for there. Whether you hear us or not. We care and we don't do what we don't do. And we gonna continue to do what we do. We understand y'all caring. But understand this, we're willing to die for what we believe in. Right, so right. understand this. So we don't we don't we don't worry about that. Hey, what's like that? Oh, just, you ain't subscribed yet? Man, look at this guy, man. You ain't right, man. Get the press the button. Press the button. Yeah, I just wanted to finish with, with my last uh, thing, and then this is my stance. Um first Corinthians 15. Uh, it says, uh, now I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters. 15, uh, 15 just starting at verse 1. Uh, now I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preach to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold on to the message I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, for I, for I pass on to you as the most important what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to over 5,000 brothers and sisters, most of them 
who are still alive at the particular time of his writing, but have fallen asleep. So my, my, my stance on the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's what I placed my faith in uh, 14 years ago, and that's why I'm going to continue to stand firm in. Um, I, I believe that I am saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, and I believe through that uh, saving faith, uh, good works will be produced in me through his Holy Spirit that is the... Um, 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 the, 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 the seal that, that of his promise guarantee. until he is to come, a guarantee until he is to come. So, you know what, brother, I appreciate uh, the time. I, I knew coming into this conversation, we, uh, we, we weren't going to uh, be able to convince one another of anything different. Um, but I do like the healthy dialogue, you know what I'm saying, that we had. Um, and I mean, I have nothing but well wishes and prayers for you guys. I, I, you know, I, I hope that you would continue to uh, study the word, not just. Uh, sit in what you have been taught, but to actually open up the book and and, and and read it and read it and put into proper perspective of what is being taught and said in the Bible. So um, that's you that's that's all. That's, 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 that's all I want. And, and that's what I recognize. I'm closing. As I started this conversation, I would say, what we teach is that we are Israelites United Christ. Uh, we teach that the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the are the Israelites. Uh, until the, if the Christian church does not start to teach against breaking the laws of God, a sore judgment will come upon you all and upon those in your congregation. And as the leaders of the congregation, you have a very important responsibility to teach the people inside the laws of God so that God will not destroy them when he comes back with his angels. Read verse 14. Lamentations of the two of verse 14. Come on. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. The Christian church, and I'll just say this one in multiple. Uh, they teach voting. They teach not to keep God's commandments. They teach to keep Christmas, Mama's Day, Father's Day, all these things which are against God's commandments. Vain and foolish. Come on. And they they have not discovered thine iniquity. They do not discover the adulterers in the congregation. They do not discover the drunks in the congregation. They do not uh, discover those that shave their beard in the congregation. Read. To turn away thy captivity. And if they did, it would turn away the captivity that we are in this present day. So our stance is the Christian church must, must teach against the breaking of God's commandments and must teach the faith in Christ. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation.